Hello, everyone. Happy holidays. Uh, today, I want to look at a really interesting game, which a student of mine and I played together uh, during our lesson a few days ago. Uh, the time control was 10 minutes. The reason I want to look at this game is because of the positional aspect of it. Um, uh, both people, uh, we played against someone rated a little bit over 1900, as you can see. Um, the opening is the usual Sicilian defense, e4, c5, knight f3, c4, knight c6, which is one of the many responses which black has. He can also play d6, e6, knight f6, g6, even a6, uh, many moves are possible. d4, black takes, obviously takes back. e6, um, which is one of the main moves in this position. White has several options. We decided to play c4. c4 is the Marozzi bind. We have control over this square, which is nice. It also makes it hard for black to make this push. The reason why Black wants to make this push is he has more points in the middle, and one of the main ideas for Black in the Sicilian is actually to try to play this move. And a lot of the time, the way White creates this setup is he might put this pawn here and this pawn here, creating this pawn chain. Uh, it's going to be incredibly hard for Black to do anything about it. Okay, Knight here is a mistake. Uh, we played a good move that we did not find the best move. Um, the best move here, uh, positionally, is knight b5. And the reason is, black has this weakness over here. Uh, black can uh, take control over this square again by playing knight g6, but... Uh, the problem for black is we would still play this move. So let me show you with the arrows. So, um, or even let me show you on the actual board. So analysis. Um, uh, the idea is uh, we play here, and when he plays knight g6, we can play knight here. And the point is, after takes, takes, um, black has an issue. Uh, he's not losing by any stretch of imagination, but white is better. Why is white better? Well, white has two bishops. Uh, black has this weakness over here. Um, and uh, this bishop right now is not the greatest piece in the world. So it's not like black is losing by force, but white is very comfortable in the long run. So let's get back to the game. We play knight c3. Um, it's the usual move you play when your opponent does not allow you to play great moves. a6, he takes control over b5, so now knight b5 is impossible. Uh, we broke the bishop because we want to castle. Um, in the Marozzi bind structures, vast, vast majority of the time, White is going to castle short. Castling in this direction is a little bit less safe because your king ends up being a little bit more open. Knight g6, because this knight needs to go somewhere. Um, we castle. He developed the bishop and got ready to castle. King h1. Uh, king h1 looks like a really strange move. Um, but the point behind King H1 is White would like to play F4 and F5, um, which uh, is one of the common ways for White to play in the Sicilian. One of the issues is this diagonal, uh, once F4 is played, uh, might not be extremely, extremely um, good. For this king, and so before we move f4, we move the king uh, to get off the diagonal. And black plays bishop f6. Okay, of course it includes the bishop. He double attacks the knight. We brought in another defender. 
Um, a knight, he plays queen b6 to put another attacker here, which looks like a good move because it also attacks this pawn. A move like knight b5 could be possible, which does a couple of things. It attacks the queen. It also wants to put the knight here. So black played queen c7, which is... I mean, it's a chess move. Um, uh, we played queen d2 first before playing f4. F4 is a move you can play at any point. Um, but the point of queen d2, it simply improves. It defends this pawn just in case. It supports this bishop also. Uh, the point being is if we play f4 and something showed up over here, we are not worried because our queen just covers. Um, and the rooks are connected, that's nice. And black played a very strange move. And we played a good move, but uh, it's a natural move. Obviously, this is attacked three times. So we played the most natural move with defending with the rook, which is fine. A better move here is actually c5. And c5 is very good. It does two things. First of all, if he takes, there is attack. Knight f5, uh, for example, or knight b5 with the idea of going here and attacking the queen at the same time. Is incredibly strong. Um, and the point is, if he doesn't take, well, he has a lot of dark square weaknesses which can be exploited. Um, we played rook d1, and here he decided to trade, which I guess makes sense because he is behind in development. We have six pieces out, and he has four. Uh, so he engages in a mass trade, takes, 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 takes. And it seems that he solved most of his problems, but the problem for him is he's still behind in development. He has this knight over here, uh, and none of his other pieces are playing. He castled, and now uh, we played probably the one of the most instructive moves of the game. Um, there are several ways you can win a chess game. One is through tactics. You find a nice tactic, which your opponent does not see, um, and you win. The other is you restrict your opponent's pieces. Although material might be the same for both sides, uh, one side will be doing uh, one side will be doing much better because his pieces will be a lot more active. So we played c5, and the problem for black after c5 is it's very, very hard for this bishop to play chess. Uh, it, all of you know the of a sound rule. Black cannot play here because we take. Uh, black cannot move this pawn either. And so that means this bishop does not play for a while. That also means this rook does not play for a while, which is kind of important. Okay, our opponent played knight f4, and he wants to trade. Uh, trading for us is fine um, because... One of the rules which you want to follow is if your opponent has a bad piece, you want to trade off his good pieces. So allowing this trade is actually okay, because if black ends up with these two pieces, it's not going to be very fun. But we decided to move the bishop, which is also okay. And the point again is there might be even more pressure over here. AC5, attacking this rook. And rook d6, and that makes it even harder for black to do anything. And white has a very simple plan. White wants to double up the rooks. White wants to reposition the bishop over here. White wants to bring the knight in this direction. And black is just completely helpless. Um, black brings the knight back and attacks the pawn. Um, we defend it, and also again, this move is now a possibility. Black plays rook b8, which is not terrible, but again, it's very hard to come up with a plan. And we play bishop g4. One of the ideas of bishop g4 is, again, this is pretty much the only piece that black has which, which can do anything. Uh, for right now, we are stopping him from moving because the spawn will fall. We're also stopping this from happening which would activate this rook. 
Um, and occasionally we can trade because, again, if your opponent has bad pieces, you want to leave him with those pieces and trade off his good pieces. Um, he played rook e8. We played before the point of before is with the point. This pawn with the pawn, which means this knight is free to move over here. G6 does pretty much nothing. We took the knight, getting rid of one of the good pieces of our opponent. He takes back with the rook. We double up. The idea is, well, uh, we're just improving the rook. He tries to run his king. And again, if you look at the position, this bishop is stuck. And moving this pawn is just going to lose that pawn. Um, um, and also, again, um, but Kevin said that probably moving it would have been the best idea. Because right now, he doesn't even get to move it. And black pieces are just completely passive. Uh, I mean, we are tying this pawn, but we probably don't even want that pawn. Because if you look at these two pieces, they're never going to move again. And he trades, and we can take both, we can take either way. We took with the pawn, and the point is, this is black. We can attack that bishop a second time, which means that his king will be here. And black pieces will never play chess again. And that means this king cannot move. This bishop cannot move. This rook cannot move. And that means our king can just come and do whatever. So let me show you really quickly. He runs his king because he knows this is coming. This king. He defends. And we just get ready to bring the king. He cannot move the king. He loses the bishop. He cannot move the rook. He loses the rook. The bishop is stuck. He can't do anything. We might also just run him out of pawn moves, and then he loses a piece. Or, again, we can play more actively and bring the king. So he moves his pawn. We simply defend. And here he resigned. Um, and I don't blame him for resigning. Uh, if you look at the final position, um, computer says, although material is even, um, at depth 22, white is up more than a queen. And this is why positional chess is so important. Knowledge of tactics is, of course, of, of course necessary. You don't want, you don't want to lose the game, um, to a simple tactic. You want to punish your opponents for tactical oversights. But the second point, which is very important to remember, is you need, or at least you would like, to make your pieces active. You would like to make your opponent's pieces not active, as demonstrated here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe. Happy holidays, and more material will appear soon. Thank you.